It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News Roundup. I'm tonight's host, Roland Boyden, and that makes this 5.45 live. And tonight we've got plenty of clips, plenty of action. We'll be uh, taking a look at uh, VYVVT, um, get you familiarized with FEMA. There's been some pink fire trucks coming through town, all that and more. And remember, we do it all in 15 minutes, so stick with us. We don't have the power, the money power of these corporations. We have the people power. Welcome back to 545 Live. A uh, little uh, look at what was going on outside the U.S. District Court earlier today. And before that, you get a sneak peek of what we were doing live on Main Street from the last gallery walk. Uh, more on that by visiting BCTV's video on demand at brattleborotv.org if you want to see what we did live on the street. But back to the show. As I mentioned, footage from uh, protests held outside the U.S. District Court this morning during the beginning of what promises to be an epic battle between Vermont Yankee power plant owners, Entergy Nuclear, and the state of Vermont over the state's right to discontinue plant operation. My senior news correspondent, Joe Bushy, was up early to grab that footage for you, working uh, for the zero dollars overtime pay bump. Uh, and the New England Coalition, uh, in conjunction with the Safe and Green campaign, is holding an informal press conference um, in this very 2.30 Main Street somewhere downstairs. We sit here around 7 p.m. tonight, so be sure to check that out. And moving right along next, as we all know, yesterday marked 10 years since the September 11th attacks on the World Trade Centers and Pentagon, which claimed the lives of thousands of Americans. Ten years ago, tenured BUHS social studies teacher Bill Holliday collected these responses from the community. We were cooking with my crew when I heard the news and all of us, we were shocked, uh, we couldn't believe and the news wasn't clear in the beginning really, we couldn't figure out what happened then. We heard about it, I was on duty that day, we heard about it, I turned on the TV and uh, I thought, oh jeez, what, what an accident, how could, how could the pilot have, have done that? It's, uh, Something had to have gone wrong with the pilot, the co-pilot. You know, being from small town Brattleboro and watching New York City firefighters, uh, just wondering how they're going to attack this thing, you know, 80 stories high. I don't think there is a right way to go about resolving this. I mean, it's pretty big and it's new and it's very targeted, so I'm not sure that anybody would know the right way to go about it or a best way to go about it. I don't see huge mistakes in how we're going about it now. I, I'm proud of the American people and, and I, my heart goes out to the families that have suffered um, and, and the loss that they've incurred. Um, I only hope that we also act very carefully as we move forward in the international arena so that we actually solve problems as opposed to creating bigger problems. The individuals, the wives and the husbands, the parents, the children who I knew would never have their family back together again. And um, that's a very powerful emotion to deal with. The late Frank Giamartino speaking 10 years ago to BUHS social studies teacher Bill Holliday about the September 11th attacks um, 10 years ago. Yesterday never has it been more on the minds of Americans. Um, then this week. And we'll move right along. Uh, longtime Arizona firefighter Dave Graybill is bringing his pink fire trucks to town and with it his radical message of charity reform with five months of the year spent on the road in a brigade of nearly 40 brightly painted fire trucks. This growing group of firefighters, police officers, and community leaders is raising awareness and funds for breast cancer, peddling their line of pink heels t-shirts. Um, and who else than my senior news correspondent Joe Bushy was there to catch up with them. My wife was diagnosed with breast cancer a couple years ago. It got me involved deeply in, in uh, women's cancer awareness. And I got these guys here. It took me a year, but I got them here. Uh, hopefully we can get them back. But I'd like to share with, uh, with the people of Brattleboro and our area. That's what it's about. It's about love and trust, honesty. Do what's right. Go to our website, take our brand, implement the program in your own community, and 100% of it stays there. No more commissions. Don't sell your labor of love out. 
Let your people always be first and you'll be taken care of. Next, uh, FEMA is uh, on everyone's mind as well. Last week, uh, they announced that Wyndham County residents now qualify for assistance. They opened a disaster recovery center at the Living Memorial Park skating rink and now offer the ability to register there um, in person or by telephone, online, or even by sm smartphone for all the info on how to do that. Here's FEMA Public Information Officer Denise Warhack when she spoke with BCTV ED Core Trowbridge at the opening of their room. We're opening up a disaster recovery center here in Brattleboro. Uh, we're telling folks if you suffer damages, make sure you register with FEMA. You may be eligible for federal help. And the way you register is calling the 1 800 number. Can I give that number? Please do. 1 800 621 FEMA. That's 1 800 621 3362. Um, or you can go online to disasterassistance.gov and apply that way. Or you can even use your smartphone at m.fema.gov. And there's more on the uh, FEMA story um, for that. We'll beam it back to last Tuesday's flood update info meeting for affected, affected residents hosted uh, by town officials here in this very building. Crucial, any paperwork you get from FEMA and our application that you send it in because is no cost, no obligation, but if you think you might have assist, need assistance, you <coughs> even if you have damage and you don't feel like you need anything, there might be mold later that you didn't know about. There might be reasons that you're going to want to be in the system and have that option available to you. You um, basically fill that form out stating who you are, how to contact you, and that's very important. It, it asks for contact information because I know a lot of you may not be living in your homes right now. And before we move on, I'll just repeat once more. Uh, register with FEMA if you think you might be eligible for disaster relief. You can call 1-800-621-FEMA, um, or you can register online at disasterassistance.gov, and even by smartphone or tablet at m.fema.gov. All right, and with that, it's time to hit our calendar. All right, getting right into the calendar. Tonight, the Brattleboro Planning Commission meets in this building at 6 p.m. in the select board room. Uh, for agendas and minutes for all this uh, and Brattleboro municipal meetings, visit brattleboro.org. And moving on tomorrow at 2 p.m., findmarble.org, along with uh, local and state representatives, will hold a press conference, uh, a, a briefing to discuss updates in the case of missing BHS student Marvel Arvidsson. They'll discuss new information in the case, including uh, the $1,000 reward um, and info on their upcoming event, Bring Marble Home a Hike for a Cause. Again, that starts at 2 p.m. tomorrow, September 13th, and is being held at the at, uh, findmarble.org's Brattleboro office, located at 56 Harris Place, which is uh, Harris Place off of uh, past TD Bank um, on Main Street, and you go past the Richards group there as well. Again, 56 Harris Place. Earlier today, Joe spoke with the missing teen's aunt, Trish Kittredge, about the efforts to locate Marble. We're looking, looking desperately to find him. We've set up the find, findmarble.org, uh, findmarble at gmail for contact to us, and we've been uh, initiating searches door-to-door, -door, um, information canvassing, and uh, looking for tips through Twitter and Facebook. Uh, most of our searches have been out of the Chelsea Royal Diner, that's in the vicinity of where Marble was last seen and lived. Uh, we are planning a big uh, hike for a cause, help us bring, uh, find Marble, bring him home. Uh, this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, we'll be basing out of the Chelsea Diner. And uh, on a daily basis, we're looking for volunteers and support to staff information tables in Brattleboro itself. Uh, the Brattleboro Co Food Co-op has been generous enough to allow us to staff tables there, as well as Mocha Joe's, um, and we're looking for other places that that could be useful. So um, thank you very much. Any support would be greatly appreciated. Moving on, tomorrow night at 6.30 at the All Souls Church in West Brattleboro, local filmmaker Catherine Turnis will premiere her 40-minute documentary, Vision Quest, A New Chapter, which chronicles the rise of Unitarian Universalism in Brattleboro and the present-day church's search for a new vision statement. Um, and I'm excited to get to debut a sneak peek here um, as part of our uh, calendar coverage, um, as I myself work closely with Catherine Turnis on this film. And we've got it right now, so let's take a look. Early in December 2001, a stranger appeared at All Souls 
just as a worship service was about to begin. He took the lectern and began to speak, delivering a message that became more and more bizarre and incoherent. Concerned for the safety of the congregation, police were called to take into custody the man no one in the congregation knew and who was threatening to do harm to himself. What happened next has been interpreted in different ways, but in the end, the police shot the man in front of several witnesses, and Robert Woodward later died of his wounds. There is also new hope that we are growing strong again. Again, the full dock screens tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. at All Souls Church, just west of the fire station in West Brattleboro. Um, I hope to see you all there. Quite, quite a film. And continuing with the calendar, Wednesday, uh, the rescheduling of the WKBT Brattleboro Savings and Loan and Latches Partnership Fundraiser, Load the Latches, which was rescheduled due to the flood, takes place in the Brattleboro Savings and Loan parking lot from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. WKBT DJ Peter Fishcase will be broadcasting live with moving trucks um, on site to collect groceries, which will be distributed to the drop-in center, as well as hard-hit communities around the county. And to close out the calendar today, Wednesday night at 7 p.m., the Guilford Free Library is hosting a talk on Guilford author uh, Royal Tyler. And since I try and memorize at least one press release word for word, a show, we'll uh, do this one. Here goes early Guilford and Brattleboro author um, Royal Tyler will be subject will be the subject of a talk um, and reading at Guilford Free Library on Wednesday, September 14th at 7 p.m. Don McCline, co-chair of the uh, Anniversary Committee and longtime Tyler aficionado, will speak about this prominent Vermonter and give a short reading from his work. Whew. I think I mostly got it. Again, 7 p.m. at the Guilford Free Library this Wednesday. Um, and that does it for our calendar, but if we missed your event or you want more coverage than just me yammering away with your press release, maybe you want uh, someone, you or someone from your organization to put a face to your event and get on camera, then email me, roland at brattlebrotv.org. That's R-O-L-A-N-D at brattlebrotv.org, and we'll be sure to get your um, event listed there. And with that, it's time for our BCTV Schedule Quick Glance. The Quick Glance is my daily opportunity to shamelessly plug what's coming up here on BCTV on both our Comcast cable channels 8 and 10, and we'll start tonight uh, with channel 8 directly following the, uh, this broadcast. At 6 p.m., we have the West River Valley Irene Aftermath piece from 545 Live and news correspondent Teresa Maggio, which includes video of the damage, the cleanup, and the bevy of interviews so indicative of the confusion, hurt, and ultimately strength and inspiration rooted in that storm. Um, and we've got a piece from that as well. Jamaica is the new terminus of Route 30 because their bridge broke during the storm. And gravel trucks screamed around. How did you get out of there? Okay, we. <laughs> this was fun. It was really nice. The guys uh, came around with ATVs and my wife was in a, a Honda uh, Jeep with a trailer behind, and when we got down, she says, it's not Disneyland. <laughs> Next up on Channel 8, we have uh, one of the many broadcasts of the BCTV special, Brattleboro, open for business with a message from local businesses urging consumers to grace downtown shop owners with their presence. Grab a pen because it shows at 8.42.55 today, and you can also find it on our YouTube channel, keywords Brattleboro and television. We've been hit pretty hard by the recent hurricane, but we're still open, going strong, we're here. As you can see, we're open for business here, and Brattleboro invites you to please come and support us. We're very happy to be open and very busy. We're here, we're open, we would love to see you. We are open. We are open, so come on down. Come on down and shop. We are here. We are open. We'd love to see you. We are open for business. Come to Vermont and see all of our beauty. We're open. Come on and see us. We're okay, we're dry, we're warm, and we are open for business. I'm open for the good.